just going to give you all a quick overview of the cab of the, in cab of the Volvo. Now what we got here, the superior pack body, just a normal control box, the joystick of course. Um, reverse cameras, this has got three reverse cameras, that one's showing the rear view. Uh, that particular screen, it's a split view, it's showing both at the left hand side and the driver side. There's a driver side that's left hand side. You can change two different screens with it, with it, whatever tickles your fancy. That one is at the driver side, and it's at the passenger side. Uh, it's our dispatch system, it's not on at the moment. Okay, we've got typical it's interior lights, that's for flashing light, but it's it's uh, uh, it's not in use at the moment. All, all that runs through the control box here. This is a power divider and diff lock. The first switch is for the power divider, and the second one's for the cross locks if you need them. Lighting up on a dashboard there, showing radio, typical radio, dual aircon. That's the trailer brakes. This truck's designed to tow trailers. This particular truck doesn't have that equipment, but the switch is still there. Traction control. It's a hill start, so you park, take off from a standing start on a hill, it stops the truck from rolling back. That's a switch for your PTO. Handbrake. And just headlights, dimmer, hazards. There's this control on the steering wheel for the radio. On these wands here you've got, that's for your retarder. And the other wand is for your washer wipers as well as control of the computer the printout on your on your dashboard here. Now on this side you've got blinker and cruise control as well as high beam. Now this wand controls different dashboard functions and all your all your uh, um, driver messages. The computer's got a folder, it'll flash it up here and then you'll be able to access that using using your wand. It's pretty tricky. The layout of the, the dashboard I've got there, I've, I've got your gear shift control there. That's telling me distance to empty and about how many kilometres, how many layers I've got, how many kilometres I've got. At the moment that's, that's my fuel economy. The truck's using two litres per hour. It's litres per hour when you're stationary but when you start driving it'll switch to uh, litres per 100 kilometres. And the bottom one, that message there telling me that there's been a fault recorded and uh, you can go through and have a look at that. I've looked at that, it's it's minor. If it's a minor fault it'll just record it so that when your truck needs to go for service they can uh, have a look at it then. Three, it's just a level I've got the retarder on. And PDO, self-explanatory. Of course your speedo. You can, you can change these the layout here if you want if you don't want to see what your gear shift your gear layout or your distance to empty or that you can change that I think there's about eight different functions there it's pretty groovy you put uh, gearbox temperatures one engine oil temperatures another one and you can e even alter which way you want to have them presented I've got this turbo boost gauge Oil pressure gauge, temperature gauge, fuel, and both air pressures. No great, nothing there, no great mystery there. Sticky under here, it's pretty dirty, it's been raining all week. Uh, that is the brake booster. Now, these have got disc brakes, big disc brakes, you can't see them there, but they're in there. Parabolic springs. Um, one thing I don't like about these Volvos is it's queer bloody load sharing setup. If I can get a bit of a look there. You've got all these expensive moving parts in there. It's overcomplicated. I don't know why they do that, but it handles alright, it rides alright. 
just expensive and complicated. You've got this here goes up, it pivots on that and it drives that big beam there all the way to the back of the second steer if we can see and that, that's how it, it changes it, 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 in undulating mode it allows the second steer to oscillate up and down with opposite to the front steer but like I said it, it's awfully complicated it doesn't have to be so complicated that's the second steer, you can see it's a much bigger brake booster there, that's because it's actually a maxi, maxi brake, park brake. A lot of European stuff have one on the second, on the, on the, on the steer, the American stuff don't often see that on the steer. And again parabolic, big long parabolic springs, and, and shock absorbers of course. Not a real lot of travel between the front and the back steer on and often you'll feel it, uh, especially on big speed humps, so you've got to go steady, otherwise you put too much weight on one steer and the other steer will be in the air. You've got to be careful doing that sort of thing, otherwise you'll end up end up uh, flogging, flogging parts here. What else we got? Up the back. <coughs> it's just a big uh, pivot to big parabolic, again parabolic springs at the back, not airbag. Um, these ride quite well, they travel, got lots of good travel and I'd prefer to have this than, than airbags on garbage truck anyway, especially especially the terrain that we've got to travel through. Uh, of course big control arms there. These ride very good for, for a spring, leaf spring truck. They ride quite well. Oh, there's the camera. There's one of the cameras. Just mounted in the bottom of the door. It's inside the door so it's not going to get wiped out in a hurry. If you, get, if you wipe that out you're doing well. She's pretty dirty. It's been raining. There's your second camera. Uh, sorry, the reverse camera at the top. There's your left camera at the passenger side. Again, same same position mounted inside the door. You see the access ladder to climb onto the roof. Not allowed up there without a full arrest harness.